Hey! I'm doing another one of these. Uh, it's been a while since I did a haul video, and this one's gonna be brief. I'm not going to go into too much detail about these movies. I'm gonna just talk about some movies that I recently picked up from Indicator, and I just, I really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed them, and I thought I'd share them with you. Uh, one of them in particular is not a movie that I would recommend that you go out and just watch. For me, it took, it took a few rounds to get through, and I'll get to it when I uh, start talking about that movie. But until then, guys, if you are here now and you've enjoyed my channel, if you uh, enjoyed my videos at all, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you'd like to, but any of that would be great. Recently hit 275, which is pretty cool. Um, so I've been seeing more subscribers lately and that's just awesome. So thank you guys for joining the team and yeah, let's just get on with it. Now I've heard of Indicator and I was a little bit hesitant on buying them because they have a lot of titles that are actually not playable on my on my 4K Blu-ray player, which actually sucks. And I found out the hard way because I got Devil in a Blue Dress starring Denzel Washington and I was really looking forward to watching that movie. Was not able to watch it. It was not a region free movie. So uh, yeah, going to have to find out a way to watch it on my Blu-ray player or just find a way to just watch it. But I have a copy of Devil in a Blue Dress and I don't know what to do with it. I think that Indicator did a really great job on these movies. They looked wonderful. And one of those movies that looked particularly good was Spring Night, Summer Night, one of the first examples of American independent cinema. It's directed by Joseph L. Anderson. Let me see if I got that right. Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, it was just a really interesting 1967 independent film about incest. Yeah, I'll give you a second. This was the movie in particular that I was like, it's gonna be hard to recommend to anyone. It took me a little while to get into, especially once I started realizing it was becoming a lot more Game of Thrones than your classic family film. Yeah, it's very tough subject matter. And for me, it was kind of hard to sit through just because that's sort of the theme throughout the movie, or not even the theme, the subject of the movie. The movie is shot in beautiful black and white. It looks really great. There's very intimate close-ups and it really feels like they're shooting this film in like guerrilla style. It feels like a guy just had a camera up at a bar and he's shooting certain scenes, especially since there's very few locations that this movie takes place in. But it's basically about a brother who wants to run away from his home. He, he just is done. He's done with living with his family. They're overbearing. They're pressuring him to either get a job or get married. Meanwhile, his sister is the only person that he can really confide in that he's close with. And so inevitably they, well, like I said, they don't show it, thank God. But it's pretty much implied. It, it, it makes you feel weird because <laughs> it is. But after that, it kind of takes a turn. The brother does go away and then he comes back to find out that he he knocked up his sister. And that's pretty much all I'll say. There's no real big climaxes. There's no big uh, monologue or anything like that. It's just drama. It's just moody. And it's a movie that, like I said, it's not easy to watch, but I'd highly recommend. One of the reasons I wanted to pick up this movie is because it was recommended by director Nicholas Winning Refn, who directed one of my favorite moody movies, which was Drive, a movie about a silent protagonist who has a dark secret past. Uh, you've watched the movie, right? If, if not, you should definitely go watch it. But the director recommended this movie, and it literally says, Nicholas Winning Refn presents, and it definitely feels like a movie that he probably would want to direct now. No, not 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 because of the incest, but because it's dark, moody subject matter. You know what I mean. So all in all, I was like, okay, let's let's go watch it, and I did, I did that, and uh, that's all I can say. I watched it, <laughs> but it's good, it's good, it's good. So check it out, but be aware, incest happens. Okay, next movie. Now the next movie I picked up, and if you guys haven't caught my Big Fish 4K movie review, go check that out. I'll link it at the end of the video. But yeah, this movie stars Albert Finney, and that movie is Gumshoe, a movie about a man who decides to take a turn in his career and become a detective or a PI. And uh, yeah, it's played by Albert Finney. And if you don't know why I mentioned Big Fish before, it's because Albert Finney is in that movie. And so when I saw that his name was attached to Gumshoe, I was like, I have to pick up this movie. I watched it and he is just incredible in this movie. He is so charming, so witty, just like his character in Big Fish. He just has 
a way of delivering lines and making you just feel drawn to him as a person. So he is sort of a smooth talker in this movie. He's someone who gets into a situation that's way over his head. He is not prepared for it because when he decides to become a PI, he doesn't realize that he's actually getting roped into something that's a lot bigger than anything he could handle. It's not like finding like a missing dog or something like that or finding out if your husband is cheating on you. He quickly finds out he's in over his head and yeah, that's kind of how the story unfolds and that's all I'll say about it. But it's a really fun movie. It's just his dialogue is just so quick-witted and there's a there is a reason behind that because this movie uses it to a comedic effect this movie is sort of ribbing you know classic noir films like the Humphrey Bogart ones and it's just taking that and then dialing it up to 11 a little bit and the fast-paced dialogue is just sort of adding to that idea and Albert Finney does an incredible job like I said I cannot spread my adoration for this guy anymore i just love that actor so much and uh yeah rest in peace to him but yeah this movie just is full of a cast of characters that just work so well together i think that the premise is really fun and interesting and yeah that's all i can really say about that oh yeah directed by Stephen Frears. So anyways, you get the basic gist of the movie, but one thing that I realized about maybe most of the indicator titles that I picked up was that there is some weird cropping, or at least I feel like the movie is, or movies are weirdly framed. It feels like there's a lot missing on top and on bottom, and I feel like they're trying to adjust it for the aspect ratio so that it's full screen. And uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's something that isn't actually there but I feel like it's being cropped I feel like there's some things being cut off from the top and the bottom or even on the sides I don't know so let me know if that's a thing that indicator is known for this again is the first time I picked up anything from them so yeah but anyways it didn't detract me too much from the movie I I loved it it was great um, so yeah highly recommend like I said earlier this is gonna be brief so the last movie I want to talk about is Albert Brooks modern romance and no not Aziz Ansari's modern romance which is a book you should definitely read it's really fun in this movie Albert Brooks plays kind of a lovesick sort of doesn't know what he wants to do sort of guy who's in a relationship with a woman that he supposedly loves but keeps having a habit of breaking up with her and so she's basically just waiting for him to mature up this movie is essentially about a man who is just too afraid to grow up and realize that he needs to be in a committed relationship to have some stability but that aspect of the movie raises the question which is important for all relationships which is the double-edged sword of are you in a relationship for stability or are you stable as a person therefore you're ready for a relationship so it does raise those questions and it does it in such a funny way. One of the standout moments of this movie is a particular scene where he's editing sound into a movie because he's a film editor and he needs a sound bite to use over a scene that was recently shot for the film that he's editing. Whatever, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but it's just hilarious. Let me just say it involves the Hulk and I was dying. For me, the best part of that scene is how Albert Brooks' character reacts to it. It's just one of the funniest scenes that I've ever seen and I love it. I think Katherine Harold in it is really good she plays well against uh, Albert Brooks in this and the romance and the back and forth relationship that they have is it's frustrating it's frustrating to watch it's one of those relationships where you're like why are you guys even getting back together but that's sort of the humor of it all it's sort of this doomed relationship that they refuse just ending it they they just love each other so much that they have to keep coming back to each other and basically it's a movie about waiting for his maturity to happen which never does and also way too many shirtless scenes with Albert Brooks the man is just he is just so hairy it's almost distracting anytime he takes off his shirt i'm like i, I can't i i'm not hearing any of the dialogue it's just it's just chewbacca that's all i'm saying so that being said i'm not body shaming or anything like that but it's just <laughs> it's just it's just distracting it's just so much hair anyways that's it that's all i gotta say about that uh there is a spider literally on my computer right now i'll i'll show you guys get off. So I am, I am, now that's all I can think about. That like, in the corner of my eye, is it gonna, is it gonna, I don't, <laughs> I don't like spiders. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a like and also leave a comment down below what you thought and if there's any movies maybe that I should pick up and talk about, please let me know. I really do appreciate the comments and likes are pretty cool too, but I really, really, really appreciate subscriptions. So, 
If you could hit that subscribe button would mean a lot to me. And yeah, look forward to more of these. I have a couple more videos lined up, not haul related, but I think I'm going to be completing that Batman v Superman video. I do have the rest of the reaction. It's just, it's, it's hell. It's hell to edit. And anytime I open up that file, I, I want to cry. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And like always, guys, I will see you later.